Welcome to a special Saturday edition, a financial Saturday edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller here. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to dissect something with a little more time than we normally do our episodes. So hopefully you have some coffee or whatever you're doing, a long drive ahead of you or something, because we're going to get into a topic in much more depth. When I named this podcast back in 2019, there was no COVID word. There was no supply chain disruption, and there was no market crash that has eliminated $3 trillion of investor retirement savings over the last just two weeks. My goal was to make astrology fun, make it light, make it quick and snappy, give you just a little bit to think about, because if you drone on and on, as I've realized I could do here, it gets to where you're blowing bubbles. So that was the idea. But boy, you know... Within a year in, we had COVID, and now we have this. So our moniker, if we choose to keep it, (laughs) would be that it will indeed be fun again. All right, I've set this up on the podcast, but every Friday night or Saturday morning, Ray Merriman, truly the dean of financial astrology, consulted by groups and entities around the world. In fact, on June 23rd, he is doing a online webinar about gold, crude oil, and now our markets and Bitcoin for the Chinese market. And it's being webcast. And all of that information, if you'd like to check in on that, is on his website and is at the bottom of the newsletter. The newsletter is at mmacycles.com. There's a link up at the top. You click that. It's free. If you subscribe, you get it to your inbox. So what I thought we would do is I'm going to pull parts of this and we're going to go through it, reading it together and kind of catching his observations. And then I'll do a little bit of elaborating in between. But I'll tell you, this is how the big boys who manage money tie astrology and money management together. So he says things are getting pretty ugly. You get the feeling that Jamie Dimon, who is the chairman of Chase Bank, he also I became familiar with him back in the 1990s when he managed uh, what was then Solomon Smith Barney, now is Morgan Stanley, but he was uh, the understudy of Sandy Weil. But I've followed Jamie's career because he was involved in the business that my dad was involved in and seems to be a fairly straight shooter over the years. Yes, agendas, but seems to be when Jamie says something, it's not like a politician saying it. You get the feeling that Jamie Dimon and Elon Musk, you all know who he is, might be right when they say, stated in the last couple of weeks and quoted in the newsletter and quoted on this podcast regarding the financial markets, something along the lines of, Houston, Houston, we have a problem. Jamie Dimon's term, as I mentioned this week, hurricane, financial hurricane. In a week that witnessed Venus conjunct Uranus on June 11th, and squaring Saturn on the 18th, which is known as a translation of Venus to the Saturn-Uranus square, and with the Sun squaring Neptune right in the middle, June 16th, many markets got hammered. All right, let's set this up because this is important. So Venus conjuncted Uranus back on the 11th. That was a week ago today, Saturday. Two days before that, on the 9th, is when this market started to break. There was a statistic floating around online the end of this week that said that for that of as of Thursday, so not counting yesterday, as of Thursday, 90% of the stocks on the S&P 500 had dropped five of the last seven days, and that that has happened absolutely zero times since 1928, making this the worst destruction of wealth in history. For our listener on Old Soul, New Soul, who is still trying to disprove astrology, (laughs) you don't want to mess with this stuff. Venus conjuncting Uranus. Then, as we mentioned yesterday, at 5.30 this afternoon, it squares Saturn. So we've been in this week-long First of all, as that Venus conjunct Uranus aspect was happening last week, the crash began two days before that. That's in the applying phase. Also, the moon was applying to the full moon, which was on Tuesday. So then after that happened, 
Venus is applying in this square to Saturn, which culminated today, and you saw what kind of week we had in the markets. This is what he means, that this is a translation of Venus to the Saturn-Uranus square. In other words, we're tying together two aspects. Last year, Saturn squared Uranus three times over the year because of the retrogrades. And when it turned retrograde on June 4th, it now is moving back toward that square. It won't hit it by degree and minute, but it will hit it by degree. Of course, that's all in the sign of Taurus, which is ruled by Venus, which is where we look in the chart for money, also in the second house. Then, also on Thursday, the sun squared Neptune. And that was kind of the last big day of drop before the market somewhat stabilized yesterday. As the newsletter says, many markets got hammered. As mentioned in our Twitter feed earlier in the week, this is from the article again, these are signatures of a mini panic. If you don't follow us on Twitter, go to Twitter MMA, that's Mary Mary Apple or Merriman Merriman Apple Cycles on Twitter so that you don't miss important posts that they are now issuing regarding geocosmic and lunar signatures related to current market behaviors. You know, I'm feeling personally, just a personal aside here, I'm feeling so honored to have the names affiliated with this podcast, like Stephen Forrest, Robert Glasscock, and now, with permission, doing this from Ray Merriman. I mean, this is top-shelf stuff, you guys, and this is a guy to follow. So if you're on Twitter, MMA Cycles would be a good one to follow. Continuing. The markets got pummeled last week as leaders of governments and central banks who can affect markets with their policies, decisions, and announcements seemed to lose much credibility. This is also in the chart. He doesn't go into it as much, but this is the whole Neptune challenge that we'll talk about in a bit on the solar arc charts, but this is happening. This is typical of the Sun square Neptune, and it will not end quickly as Neptune will turn retrograde on the new moon of June 28th, with the Sun also square Jupiter. As a result, we have a mini panic underway, maybe more than many, he puts in parentheses, which is the nature of Uranus being highlighted too, as several global equity indexes and other financial markets broke long-term critical support. I'll have further thoughts on this in the next section. For the next couple of paragraphs, he goes over what happened last week in various markets around the world, and I'll refer you to the newsletter if you'd like to read through the details of that. But he concludes this section by saying something very big is going on in the financial world, and no one really seems to have a handle on how to navigate this smoothly. And it's just not comforting enough for the president to announce that this is all part of a big transition, as if he expected this. We can see that a major transition is underway. We just can't see how this is going to end well without a serious recession or worse. Short-term geocosmic and longer-term thoughts. Quote from President Joe Biden on Twitter, June 14th, 2022, Tuesday, the day of the full moon. We are not going back to the false promises of trickle-down economics. We are going forward to an economy that works for everyone. End quote. Excuse me, Mr. President, but exactly what type of economy does work for everyone? Communism? Socialism? Capitalism? One that empowers individuals to be entrepreneurs and job creators to control their own destinies and help others gain control of theirs. Or one that empowers governments to control everyone's destiny as the leaders of that government see fit. First off, let's try to see the potential for positives from last week's carnage brought about by rising inflation and interest rates. Many markets made new lows at the end of last week as Venus approached its square to Saturn on Saturday, June 18th, today. One of our basic rules is that any market declining into a hard aspect of Venus and Saturn is a candidate for a rally, 
there is hope in that one aspect underway now. So we're back to our pivot point concept here. Not that the aspect that you dissect the aspect for what Venus and Saturn means. What you do is you consider it powerful and a pivot. Really, this is pretty simple interpretation. You're just looking for these financially related aspects, as he's mentioned. Saturn, Uranus, anything dealing with Neptune, really all the outer planets. Pluto, Saturn, Venus ruling money, Mars can be a trigger. So as these aspects happen, they become pivot points for the market. Now, another pivot point ahead of us for the market will also be the new moon. So we could have a pivot underway next week moving toward that as well. Back to the newsletter. That may be where the natural cosmic positivity ends. That's an ominous statement. Because between June 28th and July 2nd, Neptune changes directions. The Sun squares Jupiter. And Mars will square Pluto. With Neptune, there is this disturbing credibility problem with leaders making misleading and disingenuous assessments about what is happening and with what is going to happen that no one is buying. With Jupiter, the misleading statements can be exaggerated, further eroding the credibility of the messenger's authenticity. And with Mars square Pluto, the obsessive death march of Russia through Ukraine is apt to increase in brutality as more human lives are wasted on both sides for a cause that only one man's hatred against the rest of the free world that he feels has taken advantage of him. Now let's talk about Pluto and its real-life horror stories for a moment before trying to offer a way out of this muck that has almost everyone on edge. After last week's financial slaughter, I am concerned that the longer-term cycle trend in many markets is turning bearish. I'm also concerned that the geopolitical trends in the world may also be turning in an ominous direction. Let's just say that I know I'm not alone feeling the power of Pluto, despite the fact that I will continue to try to make every effort to remain positive about the future, as I have during the past two and a half years of challenge. But there are cracks starting to show about such optimism as I look ahead at the next two to six years. Think about who's saying this now, and it also completely aligns with what Robert Glasscock has been teaching in the Solar Arc interpretation of the chart. I can correlate these worrisome perceptions with principles of astrology, and I can offer constructive suggestions on what can be done to navigate through this period, but I cannot control the powers of the world and those leaders who have a different agenda or intention. I note the recent huge market sell-offs have been taking place after the Fed speaks and the market rises for one day. And then these sell-offs happen in the overnight markets when the U.S. markets are closed, which, if I didn't know better, and I don't, seems very suspicious. Now let's think about what he's saying here. The United States equity markets open generally at 9.30 a.m. for trading Monday through Friday, except on holidays, which this coming Monday is a market holiday. The market closes officially at 4 p.m., but then it's almost like the big boys hand the baton. Because if you notice, the market keeps trading for the next hour. Then it breaks for an hour between 5 and 6 p.m. Then it starts trading again, and it trades all the way until the market opens again at 9.30 the next morning. That's called the Globex session, and Asia is in control of that session from 6 p.m. I'm giving all times Eastern here, 6 p.m. until 3 a.m. So it's the Asian computers that are basically controlling the market at that point, and then the reins get handed at 3 a.m. to London, and the European markets control the Globex session until the United States open at 9.30 a.m., Typically, the overnight sessions are very, very low-volume sessions, and it's kind of the market makers playing video games, honestly. I watch it a lot, and occasionally I'll put a futures trade into it. But what Ray is saying here is that over this past uh, two week and a half, two weeks, the overnight market 
has been the one where the market has been moving, primarily dropping, significantly. See, only the banks, the hedge funds, the institutions, etc., play during the daytime hours of the U.S. market. They typically don't play at night. Now, sometimes they do, like on election night, you bet they're playing. But typically, it's just really low volume, and people don't pay a lot of attention to it. And then when the United States reopens at 930, they kind of rebalance. It's called rebalancing, but they kind of fix what the overnight people did. They often reverse it in a different direction. But he's saying that the fact that they're doing this at night, you know, when Congress passes a bill at night, this is the same thing. Back to the newsletter. It is as if this massive selling is by foreign syndicates who wish the United States and other Western nations to fall into a recession and perhaps for the whole world's financial system to collapse and then be restructured. He just mentioned the agenda. The break of critical price support zones now indicates that they may succeed. Parentheses, if this suspicion has any merit. The United States is going through its Pluto return, which may also be an indication of a subterfuge a behind-the-scenes coordinated effort to bring the United States down. Some, like the United States president, may find solace in calling this a transition, which is a nice way to describe Pluto's correlation to the current events in financial markets. A more accurate Plutonian description may be that this is an act of intentional destruction. But if so, is the source then really external? or internal. With Pluto, it could be either. But someone knows the psychological effect of selling big on the overnight markets. Pluto prefers to work in the shadows of darkness so that U.S. investors wake up with huge demoralizing losses on their positions and are then forced to liquidate, to sell, which only amplifies the panic. Someone is winning from this pattern. For every buyer, there is a seller. In this war, the buyers are losing and the sellers are winning. Who is selling overnight so heavily? Who is acting out the role of Pluto on the United States natal moon and Pluto in Capricorn? Pluto represents the end of a matter, the end of life, termination, it is not conducted in a manner that reforms and improves the current situation. It is either reconstruction and reform or destruction and termination. And if you've listened to my Subconscious Mind Mastery podcast, you know that's the story of what happened in my own personal life. So I can definitely attest and attribute to this very process. Pluto does not compromise. And when it passes a major point in the chart, the entity of that chart does not escape unscathed. And I will say here that in the solar arc charts, Pluto and the United States are so aspected, it's just not even funny. I'm not going to go into all of them, but just know it is prolific. And listen to this. This is an ominous statement that Ray Merriman makes. The United States, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, the New York Stock Exchange, the Federal Reserve Board, are all experiencing hard aspects from Pluto to sensitive natal planets right now. Either you surrender and start the path of reform, or you feel like the vice is tightening around your neck until you have no choice but to surrender or perish. There is no room to think you can get away with something unethical. Pluto rules corruption, the exposure of, and in some cases, the redemption of corruption after an obsessive longing for power and control, Pluto and Capricorn, over others. We see it all around today, and it is, in a way, a classic battle between good and evil, life and death, a future with hope versus one of despair. But it is not hopeless. This is the waxing phase of Jupiter and Saturn, when decisions made with moderation versus extremism prove to be successful in the end. 
But with Uranus and Pluto highlighted in 2020 to 2022, the first two years are proving to be very challenging. You're going to hear more Plutonian calls for reform, like impeachment, treason, and betrayal. But quietly, behind the scenes, you will also see and hear the actions and voices of moderation, Jupiter and Saturn, starting to emerge as the masses become more and more wary of these calls for extremist actions. The future may seem very ominous at the moment, and that sense of danger and fear may increase into this autumn, when Saturn and Uranus return close to an almost exact waning square aspect again, especially within six, eight weeks of September 21st to 28th when Jupiter also makes a semi-square to both Saturn and Uranus on their midpoint. During that time, the Sun, Venus, and Mars will also make T-squares to Saturn and Uranus. Let me just say that in fun astrology terms. Saturn and Uranus close their square one more time this year. The midpoint of that square, so 45 degrees between Saturn and Uranus, Jupiter makes a semi-square, and the Sun, Venus, money, and Mars, triggers of war and aggression, will also make T-squares, 90-degree aspects, full-on squares, to either Saturn or Uranus. It's a mad, mad world, but with Pluto, it contains the power to transform in a way that actually leads to real reform and a rebirth that can create an economy and society that grows and really does work for everyone. Well, not everyone. That's impossible. But it will work for those who want to be responsible and work and who want to grow financially, assuming we don't first fall into a system that prohibits such possibilities. The future is still worth fighting for. Just ask the people of Ukraine. And that's the end of this week's newsletter. Now, if you're really into this, they also have a YouTube channel. It's run by their director of education, Gianni De Poche, and it's worth checking out, too. So why am I doing this? Why are we doing this on Saturdays? Well, one is you're getting some really good astrology. And I mean, he just basically laid out the rest of this year, at least from a financial perspective. And this has been in the cards, in the works. We've been looking at it, watching it, talking about it just not in as definitive of terms as now. Remember in the last week, I did one podcast where I said, you really need to go inside and let intuition guide you. I was involved in the markets when the tech bubble burst. That was in 2001. It was a bull market akin to what we had just seen happen, where the tech stocks were running, 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 running through the roof. There wasn't a cell phone back in those days, but you could trade and people were trading on their lunch breaks. But that was the last big kind of bubble. I knew a guy, literally, I knew him. I've seen this. Took $10,000 and turned it into $4 million during that bull market of the tech stocks. Trading call options on whatever the hot ticket was. And by the way, you can make it the other way too. You absolutely have to know what you're doing. But John F. Kennedy's father, Joe Kennedy, turned millions into billions during the 1929, 30, 31, 32 bear market, at least in today's dollar perspective. Same thing, just backwards. Now, in the solar arc chart, and this is actually the backwards solar arc, so we're going backwards from 1776, that Venus just changed signs from Scorpio into Libra. Remember, we've said this so many times, stations, when a planet slows down to change direction and when it changes signs or houses in these solar arc charts are super punched, powerful points. And that sign change happened at just about the exact top of the market. And it is now moving into a square with the United States second house, Pluto which is already in its Pluto return. And then there are so many other aspects in the solar arc chart, as I mentioned, with Pluto, that I'm just not even going to go into them. So the theme that Ray Merriman just emphasized of transformation with this, 
And then somebody who I follow also who tracks cargo ships coming to the United States said last week he could only find one cargo ship heading to the United States. Somebody else was saying that grocer suppliers are only going to be filling partial orders for their supplies. And all these people like to telegraph a little. Uh, There's probably some ego involved there. But they like to telegraph. And you have the president saying that we are going to be in a transition. And Pluto is all about transition. Now, here's the other thing. I, I know that there's a lot of consternation. You're thinking, well, what should I do? Listen, that is so different for everybody that Thomas Miller, Ray Merriman, Robert Glasscock, nobody can tell you what to do. I will say this, that the quicker this planet wakes up consciously, the faster we move out of this. So for those who will listen, share the podcast, share this material, take on helping raise the vibration of the planet. What should you do about food, your finances, etc.? Well, we've been talking since we started this back in the spring of 2019 about all these opportunities that come up in the chart for us to do this elevated, meditative, internal work. You know, when things aspect the nodes of the moon or Chiron or Neptune or these areas, Pisces, where elevation in our awareness and consciousness and connection with our higher self is more amplified. The lunar cycles, like what we just went through, these are the times that you can even tune in more. But don't go looking for confirmation. Get your plan from your, as my buddy Hemet says, your own home office. And let me make another point here. The, speaking of Hemet, this just brought this to mind, but it is relevant. During economic crises and during bear markets, typically, historically, the tobacco stocks and the alcohol stocks go up because we humans will numb up our condition. It's a lot easier to pop the top on a bottle and check out for the rest of the night than it is to tune into higher intuition, hear what it's saying, and then start to restructure those areas of your life accordingly. It's not easy, and people don't do it. But what I would highly encourage you is to stay sharp, stay crisp, stay sober, so that when the home office is trying to get through to you, it's not having to penetrate a wall of toxins. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But check out the Neptune aspects in your own chart for what that might look like for you. Now, here's one other thought that you might just put into this filter of when you consult higher source, when you consult your home office, before you are allowed to drive your car, you are supposed to buy automobile insurance. Do you need it every time you drive your car? (laughs) Hopefully not. Do you use it every day? No. You see exactly where I'm going. It's insurance. It's there for if you need it. I think one of the things with a clear mind, a clear soul, and especially on those days of hyper-intense activity to be able to do this, which we talk about on the podcasts a lot, that you should be asking what insurance should you consider for these times. And really the key areas, especially corresponding to the astrology, would be how to shore up your financial position as best possible, reducing debt, increasing cash, i.e. saving, spending less, etc., whatever that takes, and also food, because Uranus in Taurus on the cusp of the sixth house rules food, and when people who watch ships coming across from various other countries say there's only one boat headed to the United States— That might be an area that higher self may or may not tell you that you need some insurance in that area too. So this is individualistic because everybody's situation is so unique. Well, when I decided to start doing this, I really didn't expect the newsletter that we got. But wow, was that ever a wake-up call. And look, I know this is not fun astrology, but it is astrology that is being emphasized by some of the best astrologers on the planet. They're saying the same things. The news is reading the same way. So you need to get busy doing some creating. Are you going to be one who loses your portfolio? Or are you going to be like Joseph Kennedy? 
Are you going to compound it three, four, five, six times what it was? Are you going to be an asleep victim? Or are you going to be on the spiritual battleground forefront of helping initiate and bring in and advocate this new higher realm that is likely to follow? Remember, one consistent pattern of Pluto is it is always infinitely better on the other side. And that's where we'll leave it today. Let's play that side of these aspects. Yes, we may go through a tunnel, but it is going to be oh so much better on the other side. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. I'd love some feedback on this. Do you like it? Too much? Too heavy? Would you like more? Get some rest. Stay sharp. And we'll see you back on Monday. Bye.